Well, hey, good morning. It's a beautiful morning here in uh, North Georgia. Blue skies, birds are singing. Let's go see what the furniture fairy left, uh, left us in the shop. Well, hey, welcome back to our shop just outside of Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Today's project is a, is a good one. It's this Paul McCobb Planners Group credenza. Paul McCobb was a famous mid-century modern designer. He designed furniture, he designed lighting. Uh, his, his accomplishments are well documented. And one of his most successful designs was a collaboration with Winch and Dunn Furniture that he called, or they called, the Planner Group. P-L-A-N-N-E-R, the Planner Group. This is a Planner Group credenza. I believe these were produced from like 1949 to 1964. This one's probably from the 50s, I just don't know. It has one major thing that's holding it back as far as a mid-century modern collectible. And I have the doors off of it now, but the doors are supposed to be what's called grass cloth, which is basically a thin wooden door that's covered with a fabric, a weave fabric that looks sort of like a, almost like a burlap, and then it's colored. And I'll show you a picture of what it's supposed to look like right now through the magic of video. Except we don't have those doors. What we have are two smoked glass doors, and I have them out of here and packed safely away because you know that whenever I touch glass, something's going to break. So those are those are put away. I suppose I could uh, recreate those doors. I know that they sell uh, fabric that's supposed to be a replacement for original Palmakov grass cloth. I have a, a bit of a moral dilemma doing something like that on a piece that may get sold as a collector's item. Uh, if I was just doing a repair for somebody and they pr presented those things and it was going in their home, that's one thing. But we're going to resell this, and the last thing I need is someone getting tricked thinking they're buying an original piece, when in fact one of the main highlights of the piece that makes it so desirable would be reproduced, and I just don't think that's the right thing to do. So we're just going to fix this one as it is and, uh, and put glass put the glass doors back on it and sell it the way it is. This uh, piece has been stripped and then abandoned. So I'm going to bring you in. Oh, by the way, there's one, two, three, four sliding drawers. The credenza is in maple. It has a, a shelf, which is just laying down here, and then four uh, vintage 1950s style legs. <clears throat> I'll bring you in and show you what some of the issues are with it, and we'll get started fixing it. Now, the first issue is how this back is attached. It's... Um, it's not attached very well. I mean, it's held in with little brass screws. I don't know if they're original. This looks to be a more modern piece of plywood to me. I, I doubt this is the original back on this piece, but it's, as you can see, warped in areas. So it's going to need some more screws uh, to hold it in. Fortunately, whoever put it in, if it's not the original, uh, used a piece of quarter-inch maple veneer plywood, so the, the maple veneer matches the interior of the cabinet very, very well. Uh, that's great. If you look inside the uh, top drawer, there's the signature, and you can see that's faded. That's probably been stripped and sanded, but that's the Palmacob Planner Group Winchenden Furniture signature. Paul McCobb designs. And if, if you look at the front side corner, there's this horrific attempt at fixing or filling some type of damage here. And this is just a, a putty job that needs to be removed and needs to be replaced. We'll probably replace that with epoxy and, and get that so it looks nice. If there's a big enough hole there, I may just inlay a piece of maple in there. And then finally, the worst damage, and really the central focus of this video. Your guess is as good as mine as to how this happened. Look at this burn. I don't know what could have possibly caused that. Somebody had a uh, candle in here or something, but this is a, a significant burn, and if you run your finger across it, you, you can feel that it's dipped down into the wood. This is not something that I can just scrape off and refinish. It's it's really, really divoted and, and someone has worked it with a, a sander trying to get it out and it's probably at least a sixteenth of an inch 
below the surface. So what we're going to do here, and I, I often get questions on repairing burns and uh, cigarette burns in particular. What we're going to do here is, uh, is build a template and then using a router I'm going to route out this damage and we will inlay a new piece of maple on a maple patch over this and uh, I'll show you how we're going to do that. Uh, and obviously to get that work done correctly we're going to have to remove the back and we'll take all these drawers out so we can get in there. But that's the, uh, that's the big repair. Okay, the back is out. Now we can create our template that's going to be large enough for us to take this off. Now for an inlay, this is a very big piece and there's a lot of wood that has to come out of here. This is about four and a half by five and a half by the time we take into account the router bit uh, spacing and all. So I'm going to get, uh, get going making the uh, template. And basically what I'll do is using the back of the cabinet as a straight edge with my combination square here, we'll take some, uh, you know, we'll use some pencil lines and take some measurements and then cut out a square out of a piece of half inch plywood. And then that'll get mounted to this, uh, either with double stick tape or maybe hot glue, I haven't decided. And then we'll have a a template for our router bit to follow. Let me show you the router bit setup right now. Okay, this is this is my Bosch plunge router. I am not uh, a router expert by any sense of the imagination, so bear with me. But anyways, this this particular kit comes with this template guide that rides on the inside of the template, and when you're cutting the inlay. You just use the template, and when you're cutting the recess, you put this little bushing on here, this brass bushing, and that spaces it out so that the router bit will create two pieces of wood. One is going to be the recess in the cabinet, the other one's going to be the piece of wood that we're going to inlay, and they will space perfectly and they should fit in very, very tightly. But that's how we're going to do it. So I'll bring you back when we're ready to rock and roll. Let's take a second to show you how I marked this template. For my convenience, what I did is I made sure that I copied the factory edge and ran this through the table saw to get it nice and square. And I shoved it up against one side and flush on the other. I'll be able to clamp it over here and we'll either double stick tape it or hot glue it there. So now we know that the template's not going to move. I then copied the distance of these lines just by pushing against it and marking and marking, slid it over, mark it and mark it, and then using a combination square, struck these two lines here. And then for these lines, what I did was measure from the edge, measure from the edge to where I wanted the line to be. It was four and a half inches. Four and a half here, four and a half here. And the same thing on the other side using a combination square, I drew my drew my marks. So this is the part that we're going to cut out. That's how we mark the template, and uh, we'll get it cut out here in just a second. And I've decided to cut this out on the table saw, so what I'm doing is lining up this line with the waist side of the saw curve so that this line stays intact. And I'll slide this over the blade, and then I will slowly raise the blade and watch it come through and then I'll rock it back and forth up to these marks here. Now obviously it's going to overcut on the bottom but we don't care. So I'll make that cut, then I'll make this one, then this one, and this one. And remember too, the template doesn't have to be exactly precise. As long as you use the same template on both the mortise that you're going to carve into the, that we're going to carve into the credenza and the maple piece that we're going to use as an inlay, all will be well. Here we go. Don't do it like that.
You see the blade starting to come up through there. Okay, you can see that we're right on our line. The cut is perfect. I'll repeat that four times and we'll have our template done. And there we go. And as I said on the back side, it's going to be overcut, but we don't care. Now there's one other thing that we have to mark on the template, and that's the grain direction of the patch. The last thing you want to do is cut your patch out and have the grain going in the wrong way. So what I'll do is I'll put this on there. And uh, as I, I know the grain's going to go this way, so I'll put a big mark on it so I don't mess that up. Okay, there we go. The uh, template's in, in place where it's going to be, and you can see it's going to take care of what we need it to take care of. I extended it quite a bit because I wanted to get these splits out of there as well. Again, you know, I'm looking at this now. I don't know if this was uh, a burn or maybe it was ink. And then someone tried to grind it out with a sander. I, I, I just really can't tell right now. But uh, I do want these cracks out of here. So that's why I extended the, uh, the width past the stain in both directions to get this large split taken care of. Save us from having to patch it with uh, epoxy or something a little bit later on. So I think we're ready to... Uh, to go on to the next step, which is to cut our patch first. Okay, here's the setup. I've got the template taped to the maple. I've got braces underneath it to keep it from rocking. I've got it clamped with a wood screw in the back. You can see the grain is running this way, like it's supposed to, even though this little piece looks like it's going in the wrong direction. The, uh, the router has been set for a quarter inch depth those of you that aren't familiar with it, what you do is drop your router bit onto your work and then using this stop here you elevate this stop to one quarter of an inch and when the plunge router hits this you're an inch, a quarter inch thick. Uh, we've got a, a, a very small templating bit on here. I'll probably do this in two passes, maybe an eighth and then down to a quarter. So let me get you set up and we'll see how we do. Okay, we had uh, the one side of the maple wasn't milled, my fault for not catching it, and it rocked, and that's why we had to cut it twice. That's a super hard cut for a table saw blade, by the way. You can see the smoke coming out of here. Uh, the other way to do this, obviously, would be to, to cut this to thickness before you routed it, glue it down onto a piece of MDF, and then route through everything, and then pop it off. Uh, I've got a very thin blade on my bandsaw. If I had my resaw blade on there, I probably would have cut this on the bandsaw. But regardless, we've got it cut. Let's pop it out of here and see what we did. Okay, here's our uh, inlay piece, one quarter of an inch by the template. Now let's see if we can do the uh, the cabinet. This is the this is the nervous part. I've got the template glued down in the back. I'm sorry, clamp down in the back and glue down in the front. Let's not forget our bushing.
Okay, remember we're cutting with a small templating bit, so it's going to take a while to hog all this out. I probably ought to just switch my router bit, but I'm afraid I'm going to wind up bouncing off the template. I don't have a larger template. But there we go. That's uh, what, what what's happening. And we are definitely getting through. It looks like that black stuff went down another sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. So we're getting there. I'm going to vacuum this out and just keep routing this out and uh, see if we can get this hogged out and get that piece in late. I'll bring you back. There's our hole all routed out. Just give me a second to pop all of this uh, hot melt glue up and we'll see how we did fit wise. Okay, here's our patch. It fits very nicely. It's just going to need just a touch of sanding which is expected to get it down into the uh, into the recess. I don't think we could have asked for anything better. I'm very happy with it. I, uh, I intentionally matched this grain here so it looks like it circles back around and that's going to look real good. So that looks great. I'm going to get this glued up and call it a day. I'll bring you back. Well, I stayed out here to start cleaning up the colossal mess I made in the shop today. I took up just a few minutes to, to do a little sanding on that. And that came out really, really good. And you can see that the grain lines continue. We have all sorts of grain matches here. So, a little bit of color. I think is going to uh, to really make this look really really good. Obviously, this cross grain is always going to be visible, no matter what you do. And even if you'd made like a diamond patch, it still doesn't. In my opinion, doesn't help that much. But uh, that is dead flat. We got good grain matches, and I'm real happy with that. All right, I'll bring you back tomorrow. We'll keep working on it. Good morning, it's the next day. We've even got a gardenia that bloomed overnight. Isn't that pretty? Let's get in the shop. Okay, our inlay from last night dried. That's done. Let's move on to fixing this atrocity here. cannot fathom how that kind of damage could have occurred. There's no indication there was a f that was burned. I mean, and it doesn't look like an animal chewed it because it's all clean here. I mean, how do you ruin a piece of furniture and come up with this? I mean, this is, that just baffles me. Unless there was something there that somebody tried to cut out, I, I don't know. I guess we'll never know, but I guess it's time for us to fix this. Okay, I'll give this a little bit of look. I could fix this with epoxy fill, um, but I think I'm going to try to uh, inlay some wood in here. Okay, here's the hole that I was able to get cleaned out. It's relatively square, and then using my combination square. I did a 45 degree line across here so I could save this good wood. What I'll do is template this with a piece of tape as you've seen me do before. I'll put a piece of blue tape over that, trace this, put it on this piece of maple that's a cut off from yesterday and then using uh, our saws and chisels and all we will uh, get that to, to take this shape and uh, work towards getting that inlaid. So stand by. Okay, using my small combination square, I measured the depth of this hole. I then laid this up up on top of our piece of wood that we're going to uh, use. And then I struck that line just by putting a pencil against the end of the ruler and dragging it across there. So there's our thickness. And now we're going to do our shape. You know, there's always little things that will occasionally screw you up. If you look at this shape here, 
when we put our piece of tape across it, the tendency is going to be to mark it where the edges appear through the tape. But don't forget that this is the top of the side and this is the top or the bottom of the top and there's a gap here so if we measure to this it's not going to fit we have to measure to this and if you can see where the exacto knife is so up here not down here so when we put the tape on and we slide the exacto knife in there we want to make sure that we're laying on that and I will get the tape up on here and uh, get that mark right now okay there's our template what we'll do is we'll attach that to the end grain side of this piece of wood and then we will start cutting it out. Here's the tape on the end grain. I've got the top, uh, top line lined up with the top of the board so that's one less cut I have to make. And then I traced it with a pencil and I wrote the word leave which tells me to leave the lines on the paper. In other words, I'm, I'm going to be cutting, have my blade running on the outside of that line, not the inside of the line. So we're going to leave the lines. So now we're going to get brave and peel the tape off. And there we go. There's our template, our rough template. And there's the, the depth we have to uh, we have to cut to. So we'll do this on the bandsaw. Okay, after a little bit more chisel work and all, that's about ready to go in. It's it's a pretty good fit. Yeah, it's good as you can expect, at least from me, freehanding with a chisel. If I shove that in there now, I'll never get it out. So I'm going to get that glued up and then we'll get that tapped in and uh, clamped up. And we'll let it sit for a while. So I'll bring you back when it's time to uh, show you what it looks like. And here we go. Beats the daylights out of that uh, wood filler, huh? I'll tap this in, we'll let this dry, we'll sand it up, and we can do a little bit of wax fill in here if we have to. And this is gonna this is gonna come out real nice. Okay, that's done. After a little bit of sanding. That's in there. Second inlay, done. We're ready to move on to refinishing. Yes.